Ideas, images, stories, news. Throughout history, humans have pursued new and better ways to share information. Visionaries dreamed of using technology to organize and link the world's knowledge. Many tried. But the dream didn't reach everyone until this 21-page document changed the world. As soon as people hooked computers together into networks in the 1960s, they began developing user-friendly systems for navigating and finding information over those networks. Different networking standards evolved, and different navigation systems emerged to run over them. By the early 1990s, there were dozens, from networks for specialists to giant commercial systems with millions of users, including France's Minitel system and US-based CompuServe. But most of those systems were walled gardens. Users of one system couldn't join the same discussion groups with users of another system, or read the same newspapers, or easily exchange email. Meanwhile, the Internet was beating out its competitors to become the dominant networking standard, thanks in part to funding by the U.S. government. But because the Internet was non-commercial, nobody had developed a polished navigation system to run on it. Most were experimental systems for professionals or researchers. One of these experiments was developed by British programmer and physicist Tim Berners-Lee at CERN, an international physics lab in Geneva, Switzerland. Frustrated by CERN's hodgepodge of documents and data in incompatible computer formats, he proposed a new system to share, track, link, and edit documents, regardless of what computers or programs were used to create them. He described his system as a web of nodes a user can browse at will. But his vision extended beyond the walls of CERN. Berners-Lee wrote, CERN is a model in miniature of the rest of the world in a few years' time. Somebody found his copy of my original proposal, and he'd, the one with the circles and arrows diagram, and on the top he'd written in pencil, vague but exciting. <laughs> Berners-Lee and CERN's Robert Caillot refined the proposal, describing specific features of what they ambitiously called the World Wide Web, a document format, HTML, to embed clickable hyperlinks in the text, standardized resource locators, URLs, to point to information, HTTP, a standardized way to easily transfer information such as web pages over networks. Berners-Lee fought to make the World Wide Web free and open, without patents or royalties to hinder developers or discourage adoption by users. If somebody suggested I should patent the web, I'd have probably laughed at them and said, go away, you know, it's all been done before. There's no, nothing novel in it. By Christmas Day 1990, a prototype for the World Wide Web was complete. A browser and page editor, a server, and the first web page running on a next computer. For the web to succeed, Browsers were needed for other computers. CERN wouldn't fund that development. This is not our main line, so this is another thing that we say to the public. There's another spin-off of what we do, and uh, if you don't pick it up, it's your fault. So Berners-Lee and Cayo asked Jean-Francois Graff to create a library of ready-to-use code and ask volunteers from the budding web development community to use it to write browsers. There's a lot of evangelizing, yeah. Helping people who subscribe to our, to our mailing list, uh, help them you know, understand how the web technology worked and how to uh, implement things. Programmers around the world responded, developing free browsers. In early 1993, Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications released the Mosaic web browser. Images were now interspersed with text, not just in separate windows. It was reliable and easy to install. Manager Joseph Harden hired teams to create web browsers and servers for the PC and Mac. Mosaic introduced millions of users to the World Wide Web. Silicon Valley entrepreneur Jim Clark saw commercial potential. He recruited Andreessen to start Netscape and hired Bina and many of the Mosaic programmers as co-founders. Their mission? Kill Mosaic with a faster, commercial version of the browser. Netscape's Navigator browser and its server were wildly successful, bringing the web to tens of millions of users. Netscape dominated until Microsoft seized the browser market with Internet Explorer. 
By the mid-1990s, the World Wide Web, running over the Internet, had trounced or absorbed most of the proprietary systems. Today, over two billion people, a quarter of the Earth's population, use the web. With a click and a few keystrokes, we connect to nearly anything we want to see, learn, buy, or discover. It took the dreams of visionaries to open worlds of knowledge online. We connect to those dreams each time we type www.